oh man, I stumbled across this trick just by accident. I've never seen it anywhere before, and it just will help me out forever as far as what I'm doing in DaVinci Resolve when I have one monitor. In fact, right now I'm just on my laptop. It's the M1 Max. It's great. But as you know, in DaVinci Resolve, the color panel can get pretty cluttered. You know, you really want like one display out so you can see giant big screen. What are you doing? And like full on see all the detail. Then maybe a secondary monitor for like the extra tools and then a tertiary monitor for your scopes. Well, this is a game changer. This is going to make your one screen color grading just, it's gonna be night and day. Let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve color panel. And as you know, it gets really cluttered, especially on if you're on a laptop. And you know, I end up pinching my neck, looking in, squinting, all that, just to see what I'm doing if I'm trying to change stuff around, right? So how do we solve this? Well, obviously you start getting rid of these things, don't need timeline, don't need to see the clips, at least right now. And this isn't bad, you know? So if we're changing stuff, it's, it's okay, you know? But full screen is much better and you know this is like this is where we start thinking about getting extra monitors and whatever we don't need to do that so if you go into full screen you can right click and show scopes so you have the scopes within full screen cool this is like a preparation this is adding like another monitor because the trick i'm about to show you is just so awesome here we are and what we want to do is we want to have it in full screen, but operate controls like we had a color panel or another screen. So we kind of can fake that. So if you click on any curves adjustment, anything, all of the curves, you can do this, but you can't do it with the other ones. I'll show that in a second. So I'm going to click a point. I'm going to go full screen. I'm just holding that point with my trackpad. I can move it around while I'm in full screen, and get a really nice view of the subtle change I'm doing. And then here, I'll go just, just that shadows. Just enough, before and after I'm using Command D, before and after, bam, I'm loving it. So that's looking really good. Let's make a new node, always label guys. So let's go into the hue. Now this one's, I'm just gonna do my normal skin tones. I always put three here, right? So I just, I have red, burnt orange, and then yellow, right? So I can click that. Actually, let's click red. I'll go into full screen, and I'm holding that red, and I can move that all around. And you can see I'm getting those like weird red blemishes out, and I just really smoothed it. I could really, really see before, after, before, after. Um, very subtle, but as you know, color grading for skin tone, that, that's huge to me, um, and it's perfect. Like the full screen, so I'm gonna go to the orange, kind of tweak that around, and it's cool, because I can right click this and go to vector scope. I know where that the line lives for skin tone, which is, it's right here. It's at that like 11 o'clock. When I'm here, I'm just thinking 11-ish, 11, 11 o'clock. So if I click that orange, I can go full screen, and I can kind of tweak that. I'm gonna get it real natural. And go finally yellow, drag that around like crazy, see what's going on. Um, I look at those chairs, I'm actually just thinking harmonically, visual harmonic, I'm gonna kind of tweak it down a little. There, so so there we go. So if we go on, on, off, on, off, on, off, it's beautiful. This little trick is great, and I'm gonna keep going with my skin treatment right now because uh, might as well, because this trick just really, really works. So I would like to go through these luminance, saturation, and saturation luminance. Okay, so the way we want to think about this, an easy way to remember how these work is you read it like luminance affects saturation and saturation affects luminance. So like most of the saturations in the midtone, so if I drag that up, it's going to make it brighter. Same with here, the whatever is the brightest will affect more saturation, right? So uh, what we wanna do for my particular taste is I wanna click a point near the middle, go full screen, and I'm just lifting up that saturation in those a little bit of mid-tones because we're gonna lift them up in a second. 
go to the lumin saturation and luminance, click, drag. I'm just lifting that up just to brighten up that skin tone. Give it a little bit more life. So before, after, before, after. This is just a nice little pop that I like to do to my skin tone. This is before everything, after everything, before skin pop. I think it's really nice. And it's nice to be able to work in full screen and have total comfort. It's not awkward at all. You just know those shortcuts, the Command D, Command F, and then the trackpad or whatever controls. It's it's awesome. So I just do skin loom. So if we continue going, uh, the other thing is doing your actual color grading. So let's do a little bit of style points here. So um, let's look at it first. I'm going to say... I'd like to give a little bit of a a little bit of a green tone to this. So I'm going to click in the middle. And so here's a little trick when you're moving these around. If you hold option, it kind of snaps. So you just lock a point. And then I'm going to click in the bottom, go full screen, and I'm dragging that red down. Just kind of pulling that red out of those shadows. Very nice. Let's go to blue channel. Click in the middle, I'm gonna option that, lock that in. Click in the shadow, go full screen. Now I'm kind of just easing that in. I'm just gonna bring out a little bit of the blue. Kind of going back and forth. All right, it's kind of looking a little washed out, that's fine. So let's go to green. I'm gonna lock that. Go full screen. Something like that before, after. Um, it's okay. Uh, I'm kind of thinking it's too, there's not enough red in the shadow, so I'm going to go back here. Again, this is great because I can bring that a little bit of red in. That's nice. Um, now I can grab that red, fix those skin tones so you can see. And then the green, let's see what happens here. Not bad, it's okay, not my best work so far. <laughs> but uh, the amount of control, oh, there we go. That's more like it. And now actually I wanna go back and get this contrast. I'm gonna fix this, go full screen. Let's kinda tweak that. I'm gonna do another point down here. I don't like to crush the blacks too much. Um, I met Tom O'Poole, who is one of my favorite colorists. And a while ago, he was talking about crushed blacks being dated. Um, I always love that. Like, I like it when people talk about things that I love and I'm passionate about it with an insight. Uh, it's really cool because I also agree. I also agree that orange and teal is kind of uh, on its. It's uh, it's great. It's great. It really works in a lot of ways. But I think a better color grading trend that's replaced orange and teal is complementary to environment. So if it's a brown environment like a desert, you kind of lean into that and go a little bit more brown. So I'm going with the teal here. Skin tone's a little bit too pink, so let's go back to that. Where is it? Hue. So let's click that. Let's see if I can change that around. It's okay. It's kind of getting tricky. There we go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Before, after, before, after. So for me, this is looking pretty good. Um, the great thing about it is I know that there's nothing broken here. I'm not seeing any, I'm not gonna see any little red marks before in my skin by the nose. The skin tone's nice and balanced. The shadows are good. They're toned a little bit with a little bit of a greenish cyan teal um, to match the walls and the surroundings. I'm not going for an orange and teal, just circumstantially. I have orange skin, teal is complimentary, but it wasn't because I was going for that. It was because the room happens to be teal. And that's what's so great about this little technique. This is before. 
I had a good exposure. The color is fine. The skin is nice, has a nice daylight look to it. And then if I put on the color grade, it just has that nice little bit of a touch to that. And here's a little trick. So as you know, you go back and forth with color grading. Uh, here's my styled frame. I'm gonna always kind of take that out a little. So I'll cut that in half with that key, key grain. I cut that out much better. Maybe even more, yeah. Just hint at it, much better. Before, after, oh, that's much better. So this is a very, very nice, lively, and I feel like a very natural feel, and it was because of this technique I was able to really dive in deep and really see what I'm doing. So I hope that helps you guys out. If you wanna see other color grading things or any post-production techniques, let me know. This channel, I'm really gonna lean into a lot of new stuff that I think is really valuable in production, cameras, life, minimalism, all of it. It's all gonna be in here and it's gonna be really awesome. So till next time, guys, cheers.